Hello everyone, it's Dmitry, and today we'll talk about Bella S290. It's a high alloy steel with high amounts of cobalt and tungsten that provide great wear resistance and high hardness. This knife is able to work with hard materials without losing its edge. Well-known analogs of the steel are Maximet by Carpenter Technology and HAP72. The high content of carbides provide great performance, and today we'll find out what can we achieve with this steel. As an example of knife made of this steel, we have this little fella from Russian company Kmet. The length of the blade is 100 mm, its weight is around 110 grams. The main interesting fact about it is hardness, because here its hardness is around 70 points of Rockwell, which means ultra hard steel. Okay, first let's start testing with paper. So, knife has a clean cut. Now let's try to cut some glass. I guess you may see that it has a very decent scratch here. Still cuts. Well, but actually I won't recommend testing knives made of this steel just like I've shown you. Let's make an overview of steel composition. It has 2% of carbon that gives necessary hardness and strength, 0.5% of silicon and 0.3% of manganese that give this steel elasticity. Also, steel includes 3.8% of chrome that protects from corrosion, but in this case, well, the numbers are pretty low, which doesn't allow us to call this steel stainless. 2.5% of molybdenum that simultaneously increases the strength and viscous properties of this steel and corrosion resistance. 5.1% of vanadium that increases hardness and strength along with smaller size of steel grains. 14.3% of tungsten that increases operational temperature range for this steel and 11% of cobalt that significantly increases wear resistance. It is important to mention that along with increasing hardness of the material, we increase its brittleness, which means that such steel is not intended to work as a certain power tool, and we always are at risk of breaking it apart. In other words, steel is very hard, very wear resistant. Still, it requires more care because it needs more protection from corrosion. And also, we cannot use this steel as a power tool or something. We can simply break it by dropping it down due to its brittleness. Another very interesting fact about this steel, it needs much more skill while sharpening, because not all known abrasives can handle this kind of hardness. How to work with it properly? Let's find out. To sharpen this knife, we will use our branded stones TS Prof Alpha. Thanks to resin bond, these abrasive stones work smoothly and are able to sharpen this ultra hard steel without making any additional dents on the cutting edge. To protect the surface of the knife, we will use masking tape to protect it from any additional scratches that we don't need. Okay, let's begin the sharpening process. First, we need to mark the cutting edge. Then let's find out what's the angle of sharpening. We are beginning with the Stone TS Prof Alpha 100-80. So here we have an angle of 45 degrees total, which means 22.5 per side. Okay, let's begin the sharpening process. 
First, I want to remind you that TS Prof Alpha stones are working with oil. Now we will begin the sharpening process and it is very important to mention that when we sharpen steels with hardness above 61, 62 points of rock wool, it will take us much longer time because uh, the diamonds are effective with those kinds of steel, but they are still working slow enough. Another important thing was to be mentioned is that never hurry when you sharpen a knife like that, because otherwise you will either be damaging the edge, either you will not give it a proper sharpening because one section will be processed and some other could be missed. Okay, now we are switching to the stone 60 slash 40. Works much smoother. Still, please keep in mind that you process the tip and the heel well enough because we need to have a burr all along the cutting edge. Now switching to the next stone, it's gonna be 28 slash 20. Please keep in mind that your stones shouldn't touch each other's working surfaces. Otherwise, you are going to infect the next stone with grains of the previous one. Now I'm taking the next stone, it's gonna be 14 slash 10. By the way, today we want to make this knife as sharp as possible. That's why we will reach the finest finish we have at hand. And I guess this knife is going to cut time and space. Please keep in mind that every time we switch from one stone to another, we need to properly process the whole length of the cutting edge. You see, this matters when we are talking about very fine, extra fine, ultra fine finish. Because otherwise, if you will check the microscope, you'll see that when you are in a hurry, you will leave some small scratches on the bevel that will ruin the whole process. Of course, the knife will be sharp. It's not a problem to make knife just sharp. But when we are talking about extra fine finish, we are trying to reach the cutting edge that cuts with carbides inside this certain steel. Next abrasive stone, 7 slash 5. We are slowly reaching the end when it comes to standard abrasive stones. After this stone we will use just one and then we will switch to diamond paste. Okay, the last stone from the set, 3 slash 2. After it, we will start doing experiments. Okay, right now, before moving to the next step when we will use the diamond paste, I have to remove the burr. To be sure that I'm processing the cutting edge, I increase the angle for less than one tenth of one degree. And then I make several movements per side. Here, it's just two moves of the stone. Some of you might ask how many turns of the blade it will require to remove the burr completely. To my personal opinion, the proper amount will be between 30 and 40. Okay, and the last step we are planning to use the diamond paste 1 slash 0. It requires just a tiniest bit of it that we will distribute along the special tape that we use from company 3M. The idea of this tape is that it doesn't absorb the abrasive elements, but keep them on the working surface. We will work the same technique as we use when we remove the burr, but in another direction. Because if we will move outwards, we will simply cut the tape and uh, the finish will be ruined. So, just several movements onwards for this length of the abrasive for this length of the cutting edge it's gonna be like four and then turn since this is a very fine finish extra fine i would say the main idea is not to work too long on one side otherwise we will simply ruin the cutting edge it will not be working as we want it. 
As you may see, the bevel shines like a mirror. Still, we are not able to see the carbides because in this kind of steel, they are very tiny. But let's test the knife and see how it cuts. Well, this is the cleanest cut I've seen in several months. This knife is one of my favorites because, you know, when we talk about steel S290, it holds the edge better than many others. You won't see such a clean cut on traditional steels. Uh, also, despite the fact that steel requires additional corrosion resistance, despite the fact that it's a bit fragile, but when you can make your blade sharp just as this one, well, it was the money it costs. Well, if you still have any additional questions about sharpening of this steel or the steel itself, please leave your comments down below. I'm always happy to see you and I hope to see you next time.